Hi there and welcome to Economic Observations. My name is Chris. Today is January 20th and thank you so much for watching. This video is sponsored by the Tanzania School Foundation, a nonprofit near and dear to my heart. There are links in the descriptions below should you like to learn more. Let's get started. So the Tanzania School Foundation led me to do some investigative research. It appears that we are getting 1099Ks from just about everyone. And why is that? All right, we haven't gotten one from Zelle, and we can't use Venmo or Cash App because they don't have nonprofit accounts. But we have been getting them from Square and Stripe and PayPal, and it hasn't been 200 transactions on some of these apps, and nor has it been $2,000. So why are we getting them? Well, apparently, I did some investigative work, and did you know that there are six states already that have a $600 threshold for anyone who sells anything through PayPal, eBay, Square, Stripe, anybody who receives any money through a, a third party app, Etsy, any of these places. If you live in District of Columbia, Maryland, Mississippi, Massachusetts, Virginia, or Vermont, you had a $600 threshold already. So you were getting 1099Ks, as was the IRS. And in these states, the Department of Revenue decided to change the limit from 20,000 to 600. The only difference this year is Venmo, Cash App, and Zelle will now be added to those lists. In Arkansas, it's $2,500. They also changed the limit. And in Illinois and New Jersey, it was lowered to $1,000, regardless of the number of transactions. So if you are in any of those nine states and you had Etsy sales, eBay sales, anything to do with on, on your website through PayPal or Stripe or any of these other third parties and you receive income through Square accepting credit cards, if you go to a craft market or if you sell stuff on the side of the road, whatever it may be, you've already received your 1099k and you should be claiming that as income. Now the rest of the country, the other 41 states will follow suit and the threshold will be lowered in Illinois, New Jersey, and Arkansas to $600. Now this is for small businesses, right? And if you have a small business on Etsy or you sell dog bites that you make at a craft show or a farmer's market or you sell honey, you need to be claiming that as income. But you also should have everything in a separate bank account and you should be offsetting your cost versus your income, right? So if you're selling honey, well, you have the price of the bees that you have to buy and somebody, you know, your suits and your bee outfits and the jars and the caps, whatever it is. You have to claim that as expenses because otherwise the government's going to look at it and say, well, you sold $10,000 worth of honey. Yeah, but does the government really know that it costs $9,000 to create all that honey, $10,000 worth of honey? Well, you have to write it off and it's not good to have it in your personal account because you really should have it set aside separately with all your expenses in one and your revenue in one. And a lot of small businesses don't recognize this. They don't keep good records. They do it as a side hustle. They do it just to make a few bucks. But now you're gonna have to keep records. Yeah, sure, these big companies can afford to pay these high-powered accountants and they get all these loopholes and know all the write-offs. And the average little person doesn't and the average little person's gonna get screwed. Now, the Tanzania School Foundation, we've received all our 1099Ks this year, regardless of, you know, if it was, even if it was under $600 on some of these apps, we received the 1099K, and since we're a nonprofit, we don't file income taxes, we put it all in our 990 when we file after June 30th. So we don't have to worry about reporting it, we report it as income or sales of goods whatever it is, because even our donations through Stripe or our donations through PayPal, it all comes through as income. So just buy, you know, just be aware of this. So if you are hustling and you are accepting payments, and this is not for friends and family on Venmo or Cash App, 
it is strictly for business expenses. So if someone buys a good or service, so just be careful of that. Um, and, and if you do have a business, make sure you're keeping good records and ask someone that is knowledgeable in the tax scheme, you know, what's allowable and what's not. I mean, even if you have a small YouTube channel, there are costs associated with making the video. There's cameras, there's SD cards, there's microphones, there's even clothes if you wanted to use it, if you wear something special, whatever it may be, keep track of it, open a separate account, and do your due diligence. And I don't want to see anyone get hurt paying taxes where they're on income that isn't really income. All right, next, next story. The record IPO rush of 2021 led to historically dismal returns for investors with no relief in sight. Yeah, you got so many of these companies that cashed out. They knew it was the all time high. They pushed and rushed their IPO to issue the shares while there was demand, while interest rates were still low, just to get that value, their valuation even higher and to get the price up and to get more demand in the shares. Well, the IPOs, which are initial, pu initial public offerings, have just tanked. And there's really no end in sight. It says here, electric pickup maker Rivian Automotive. It's an electric car company. They only produced 1,200 cars in 2021. 1,200. They were one of the biggest IPOs of 2021 with its market cap briefly topping traditional automakers like Ford and General Motors. A brand new electric car company who produced 1,200 cars, and they only delivered 900, had a market cap value more than Ford and GM. Like, who the hell puts these valuations out? just a money grab by the companies and the investment banks that are bringing it to the market. However, the stock has wiped out all of its IPO pop and it's now trading about 12% below the IPO price. So there is no doubt that IPOs are gonna slow down this year. If you look at Robinhood, Coinbase, a lot of them are barely hanging on near that market cap area and now we have reddit that wants to go public and reddit had a valuation i believe last year of 10 billion dollars they are now seeking a valuation of 15 billion dollars now comment below and let me know if you think reddit has more value than twitter because at a valuation of 15 billion dollars it's more than twitter they are looking to raise capital and go public. And again, the founders, the CEOs, the insiders are looking for a money grab. Granted, they have to hold on to the shares for X amount of months um, before they can sell it. But still, is this possible, folks? Look at Peloton. Insiders sold $500 million worth of stock at the highs. And I'll tell you what, who do you think bought those shares at those high prices? Because for every seller, there is a buyer. And the buyer got screwed. And the people at the top who knew the information, they knew it, sold it for all those profits. Now you have JP Morgan saying, yeah, well, it's trading at 29 below the IPO price today, but we think it has a valuation of $50, even though they halted production of their bikes. And if you go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you will see 70 bikes for sale within your 30 mile radius. So if you can pick up a bike and save a couple hundred bucks, plus you don't have to pay the $259 for shipping, plus the cost to put it together, who's gonna be buying it from Peloton? No, you're gonna be buying it in the town over from someone who only rode the bike twice. This is what we're up against. Peloton is done, in my view. They are trying to survive on subscribers. They're going to try and cease the production of their products and work on subscriptions because you get a you know, personal trainer that you could watch and he can go through the things and you can spin together and whatever you do. But anyway, Peloton is done. Why is JP Morgan saying that they see a valuation of $50? Well, I believe because JP Morgan must own some shares at maybe $45 or even $60 and they want to limit their 
their losses. Who knows? But be careful of these Jim Cramers, these announcements from these investors. Be careful because every one of them is looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for you. They're trying to build some momentum trades, not based on fundamental value. It says here, Peloton Interactive has a market, <laughs> this is crazy. It's just absolutely nuts. A market capitalization of $10.5 billion. 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 Like, I've never, this has just gone out of control. So these liabilities are probably manageable, it says. Well, their liabilities, according to the last report, Peloton Interactive has liabilities of $1.30 billion, due within 12 months, and liabilities of $1.6 billion, due beyond 12 months. Offsetting these obligations, it has cash of $924 million, as well as receivables of $81.1 million due within 12 months. So these liabilities outweigh the sum of cash and near-term receivables by $1.9 billion. Okay, so they have more debt than they have assets. And the stock's still trading at $29? Let's go to Netflix. Netflix is down 16% at the close. Markets down all across all week. Unemployment, 286,000 people, the highest since October. This is a healthy market. Well, I tell you what, Peloton is going to be laying off people because they're not going to be producing any more bikes. I was talking to a retail um, landlord, a, a retail landlord, and he was saying it's all corporate, and we all know this, right? It's all corporate renters, right? They, they sign the lease and it's all corporate. There's no more mom and pop shop, but he was telling me that he can charge $20 a square foot, but the town that these buildings are in charge $7 a square foot in taxes. So the tax is so high that it makes it almost impossible for even a mom and pop or small business to rent. This is all out of whack, folks. Everything is out of whack. If you can't borrow billions of dollars, spend it on rent, and open up these shops, claim bankruptcy, lose the money in the stock market, all your invested money, then you can't make it in this world today. It's just all lopsided, and it is going to get worse. So hang on tight, folks. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you. Please give this video a like. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Leave a comment below. And we'll talk again real soon. And thanks for watching. Have a nice night.